before anybody else was here. Yeah, I know. I was here bright and early. About quarter to five. Yeah, I'm excited to really get this uh, side project rolling. Um, check out uh, Magic Carpet Radio on Facebook in case you haven't already gotten invite. Uh, we're inviting you to Magic Carp Radio right now! Um, on Facebook, we're going to get an Instagram up and going. Uh, we don't have a YouTube. Uh, but the, that's just the... Uh, what, uh, it's basically a syndicated uh, show. The whole, the whole page. Yeah. Go there, like it, follow it. Magic Carp Radio on Facebook. Yeah. What a weekend, man. Holy, holy shnikes. What a weekend. I mean, come on. Um, it's Monday morning, May 6th. And uh, you know what, Andy? We still haven't made it to the cover of the Great Falls Gazette. Great Falls Gazette. Gonna buy five copies for my mother. Gonna see my smiling face on the cover of the Great Falls Gazette. Told I told him we're gonna do this until we're on the cover. Seems like it's a little thicker uh, than usual. Um, the big news from our friends though up at the Gazette is that they're gonna come out twice a week now. Uh, it's expanding. They're growing. They got a weekend edition. Now they're going to have a Monday edition. Uh, I like it because it's all local stories. All. It's local. What's going on in town. It's everything that the, the Great Falls Tribune didn't do. Yeah. Yeah. And they got, like we mentioned last week, they got the little uh, 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 garage, uh, garage sale, uh, a little package going for them. Uh, uh, the, the, the folks at the Gazette, man, uh, geez, you guys are killing it. You're feeling the need that really was necessary in Great Falls. Like, everybody doesn't read, uh, uh, is on Facebook and belong to all the Facebook groups. And, and be, since the Tribune left town and moved to, where did they move, Andy? They moved to Kathmandu. I'm telling you where we're going to. They did not move to Kathmandu. All right. Okay. They really feel a need, though. And they're not in Kathmandu. They're right here in the building with us, right? You go out the studio door, go down the hall, catch an elevator and the stairs, go down two floors, catch a left, and there's the Great Falls Gazette. It's really easy to find. They're in the Columbus Center. They're only a dollar. And, hey, you know, support your local business. Okay? Support us, support them, anything local. So, huh, yeah, a weekend. Man, it was a weekend of uh, uh, fun-filled extravagance that I guess was going on all weekend. Uh, yesterday was, uh, 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 of course, May 5th was yesterday. Uh, not much on the national day today. May 6th is just like getting over the weekend. Yeah, because yesterday, right, was Cinco de Mayo Day. Right. That's when everybody in America uh, thinks they're Mexican. You know, it's like, oh my God, let's go to brunch and we're going to have tequila. Da dun 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 Da 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 da
tequila. I mean, come on, man. There's Corona for brunch. You know, Modelo, Dark, Especial. You know, you're all the most interesting men drinking Dos Equis, eating nachos. I know. Eating nachos. We looked it up this morning. You know what they don't serve in Mexico? Nachos. <laughs> so everybody was just going crazy yesterday, uh, doing the whole um, the whole the, the whole Cinco de Mayo. Wearing sunburns, listening to Herb Albert and the Tijuana You know, bloody just man. No, I won't do Tequila. I mean, come on. You know, sick of the mile. You know, it's 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 just like it's it's like another St. Patrick's Day. You know, on St. Patrick's Day, everybody and their mother is Irish, right? And then on, on Cinco de Mayo Day, everybody's like, yeah, they're you know, I, I went through the whole drill. You know, we gotta go to brunch and drink Coronas, <laughs> my Corona. You know, and and it's just. Yeah. Man, you know, there's a lot more to Cinco de Mayo Day than just, what, mariachi bands and parties and Corona's for brunch. I mean, seriously. First of all, everybody's celebrating Cinco de Mayo. And what Cinco de Mayo translates in Spanish to is the 5th of May. So they're just partying for a day. You know, that's the 5th of May. But they say Cinco de Mayo. That sounds so much partyistic. I don't know if partyistic is a word or not. Will you look it up? Nope. It's not a word. It is this morning. Okay. Um, for... <laughs> Second of all, it has nothing to do with Me now, the Mexicans. Mexico, but achieve their independence. You know, Cinco de Mayo. Wrong. Okay, uh, they did not. It is not the Mexican. It's not their Fourth of July. It's not their for uh, uh, Independence Day. Okay, uh, their Independence Day, by the way, is September sixteenth. What? Freaky Valley in the Four Seasons? You just said, what? See you in September 16th, which is the Mexican Independence Day. Okay? Uh, <coughs> did you know that uh, Cinco de Mayo Day is actually more popular in America than it is in, in, in Mexico? Uh, uh, you know, they're not going, la -di -da, you know, you blah, 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 you know. Um, <laughs> they're not going crazy about it. Okay, it's not their Independence Day. Uh, we've just kind of adopted it to the, uh, uh, one of our reasons to celebrate. One of the, one of the more I remember when I was drinking, Andy, and, you know, alcoholic, I'm drinking all the time, but I remember that, you know, there was certain days of the year when people that never went out, ever drinking in the bars, were in the bars. Example, New Year's, okay? Uh, Halloween. I'm going to dress up like a slut and go out. <laughs> really don't have to dress up that much. Uh, St. Patrick's Day. Called amateur days. Amateur wouldn't go out. I've been drinking alcoholic today. Those are days I would not go out. Okay? Uh, St. Patrick's Day, New Year's, Halloween. Now Cinco de Mayo. Now, why are we all drinking and partying and eating nachos and tacos, having hiring mariachi bands for the office? Why? Why are we doing it? Well, it is, uh, and do I got this right? It is Mexico's victory over the 
second French Empire at the Battle of Pueblo, 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 ah, it's not Pueblo like Colorado, it's Pueblo, and that was in 1862, right? Right, and he's, and he's giving me the thought. 1862, uh, that victory would be, uh, it would be, well, first of all, the, vi the victory itself, see, there was more, okay, the, they, okay, Mexico defeated uh, the, the French Empire at the Battle of Pueblo in 1862. And that, and if you look at the dates in there, coincidentally, those were around the Civil War of America. Well, the French were supporting the Confederacy during the American Civil War. And that uh, uh, victory uh, at the Battle of Pueblo, um, uh, it, 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 it helped stop the Civil War. Um, so you see there that you know, it was pivotal more for, you know, we're celebrating because it's we think it's the American, the Mexican Independence Day. When it's not, they're Mexican. It was, it's a battle that they defeated the French. They don't even, you know, they have a parade in Pueblo, and that's about it. It's not like everybody's drinking Corona, and, you know. It, it, it's not, okay? It's a bigger deal than, 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 than there, here than it is there. But it was pivotal because it stopped the French movement in support of the Confederacy in the Civil War. So what we should really be celebrating is that it helped, in a way, stop, the, you know, if the French would have continued to back, back the Confederacy with blockades. And we, so it, 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 it was pivotal to uh, um, what was actually going on in our country, too. So, you know, as we celebrate Cinco de Mayo Day, tequila, it benefited the United States, uh, helped bring an end to the Civil War eventually, or it did end it, but it helped. Yeah, right, Andy. Andy, some Confederacy no longer had backup. Okay, so all in all, it was a it was a, an event in history for sure. You know, for sure. Um, yeah, Cinco de Mayo beer sales are that rival that of the Super Bowl. One of the biggest day for beer sales. Right, and imported beer at that all. You know, people aren't celebrating Cinco de Mayo Day drinking Bud Light or Schlitz. Does anybody drink Schlitz anymore? Or anything, you know, Miller or what they drink? Corona, you know, Modelo. I'm the most interesting man drinking Dos Equis on Cinco de Mayo Day. So, yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah. Rival beer sales uh, out and about yesterday. The bars everywhere in Great Falls were packed. Okay, of course you had the Derby yesterday too. So you had Cinco de Mayo and the Derby. No, the Derby was Saturday, Andy, not yesterday. Cinco de Mayo was yesterday. And the bars were full. Bars were full Saturday, on May fourth, which was another day. Yeah, another holiday, actually, on the weekend. Yeah, I told you it was a busy weekend. You know, we had Cinco de Mayo just yesterday, and then Saturday was May 4th. So that's an unofficial holiday. The bars aren't full, but the comics and memes, they, May the 4th be with you. It's kind of an unofficial, all things, Star Wars. Star Wars. Da, 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 da. So, da, 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 da,
Yeah. Star, not the other star. And not Star Star by the Rolling Stones. Okay? So it was a, the uh, unofficial Star Wars was May 4th. Um, with all the things uh, going on uh, on campus the last couple of weeks, uh, May 4th had some significance uh, for those of us. Uh, I was in uh, junior high school, went on, uh, on May 4th, uh, 1970, 18-year-old, uh, 19-year-old National Guard troops. You know, I hear him say now, Hey, what a good idea! Let's send the National Guard to the campuses! Say what? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, let's send the National Guard. What, what could possibly go wrong? May 4th, 1970, as I was saying. 18, 19 year old National Guard uh, <coughs> troops uh, <coughs> uh, open fired uh, uh, on unarmed students. Oh no, look! Students armed with books and knowledge. Okay. National Guard opened fire on unarmed students, uh, <coughs> wounding 12, killing Jeff Miller, Allison Krauss, uh, William Schroeder, and Sander, Sander Schuler during an uh, anti war press will protest. Uh, at, at uh, Kent State University. Uh, not an isolated in incident, Andy, no, sir. No, people don't remember that two weeks later, on May 15th, 1970, state police again opened fire on students at Jackson State University and that is in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, they killed Philip Gibbs and a high school senior, James Green, and injured 12 unders. I was reading, uh, looking up some stuff this morning. Well, some of these people are in wheelchairs to this day. Um, no, it, no, it's not isolated. Jeez, why did I give me another one? God, uh, uh, South Carolina State, February 68. You're all welcome to look these dates up. They're right here in front of me. Uh, nine armed highway patrolmen uh, opened fire on protesters in South Carolina State. Uh, killing uh, Sam Hammond, Henry Smith, and Delano Middleton, and they wounded 28 others. Um, so, so now, now what we got on is that, you know, Americans, you know, Americans, we cherish the right to assemble and speak out. Uh, we did it in the 70s and the 60s. Uh, to, uh, we'll, to, to petition. Uh, it's in hell. It's enshrined in, in one of the constitutional amendments. It's, it's, it's in the First Amendment. It's the hallmarks of American history. Protests, rallies, sit-ins, marches. <coughs> they date to the, to the Revolutionary War. I mean, come on, I remember, I, I talked about it, even in Missoula and Detroit in the 60s and 70s. It, 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 we were marching for women's rights and civil rights and black rights. Yeah, funny, not funny. Yeah, it's not funny how they're still marching. You know, it's like, it's funny how they're still marching for black rights, women's rights, civil rights, equal rights. We're protesting wars in the 60s and 70s. We're still protesting all that. Funny, huh? No, not funny. So, <clears throat> what, what, 
what is you know it, it, it seems as much as protesting and, and, and is part of uh, part of uh, the the first amendment. Uh, now it seems like uh, you know it's it's all being uh, you know the news and the comments on Facebook, social media. It's irritating and anger, and calls to desist. No, you know, like let's get law enforcement in there, the National Guard. What could go wrong and break it up? It's not a police state. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. You, shh, shh, you can't say that. As, as a product, and you all know, my, I've done podcasts about this before, as a product of the 60s and 70s, I'm very aware that uh, the public at large, okay, I, I'm going to say the public at large, disliked, the civil rights protesting, the public at large disliked the Vietnam War protest. The public at large they even disliked the women's movement. And you know what? The public at large still does. I, I read social media. Okay? Most of the people, well, half the people and it's weird because when you talk about this country now, you got to say, well, half the people, they're irritated that they're marching for civil rights, demanding equal rights. They're mad about women marching and protesting, just like they were back in the 60s and 70s. Nothing's changed. They're still mad about it. I was there. Okay, Andy, I was there in the 60s and 70s. I remember the public outcry. I remember the, the Nixon. Tin soldiers and Nixon's calling. Yeah, so yeah, I remember. So we were met with uh, boots and gas and clubs. We were protesting a foreign war. Uh, we were protesting... Equal rights for women. We were protesting equal rights for blacks. Uh, we were fair housing, the environment. Huh. Wow. Again, it's, a, it's just like we haven't changed one bit. I'll bet you now if the Boston Tea Party. If we were like somehow make the bots, okay, it's the Boston Tea Party now. I'm sure half the country would want the cops down there breaking it up. And you know who you are. That's right. You know what gets me about this is that, you know, the, the, I don't know. It gets me as that you know, the, the, both sides, both the red and the bl blue, both Democrats and Republicans, say the exact same thing about each other. You could just not, you could take a couple words different out and not even know. They both think you're both this, they both think you're both that. I'll tell you what they're using now in the news. Did you see in the news about the protests in the college campuses? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you see that? Okay, what we're saying is, is back in the 60s and 70s, uh, John Law, <laughs> did I call him John Law back then? But back in the 60s and 70s, uh, uh, the, they, the, the press and the universities, they used the rationale of uh, breaking the Vietnam protesters up because there were outside agitators stirring everybody up. And did you see that the outside agitators are now, they're going, oh yeah, our, uh, you know, Abby Hoffman, uh, yeah, 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 Ken Kesey, that bunch, those are outside. Yeah, Allen Ginsberg, right, they're the agitators. Martin Luther King. 
He was labeled by the conservative Republican press, Nixon administration, as an outside agitator, communist, Martin Luther King. Of course, now he's dead, we're here. Now everybody says, oh, Martin Luther King. Yeah, but back then it wasn't like that. It's just politicized as much now as it is then. You know, the protests on campus now, as I see it, on October 7th, Hamas, the Milligan group that basically rules the Gaza Strip, Palestine, and the people there, perpetrated probably the uh, the, the, the deadliest attacks on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. It was horrible, horrendous. Uh, in response, uh, Israel's killed over 400,000, mostly civilians. They have targeted humanitarian food and, and aid, killing 300. Red Cross and humanitarian workers to stop the aid from getting in to Gaza. They don't want that either. They're starving them out. They're transporting prisoners and Palestinians in mass in boxcars. Germany, France, Poland, United States. The UN, the United Nations have all come out against the actions of uh, Prime uh, 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 Minister uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and even his own citizens are calling for restraint. And that's of, to no avail. Uh, so the campus protest are about the war. Don't politicize it and say it's this and that. Okay? There were people during the war that were supporting South Vietnam with South Vietnam flags running around. Yeah, there were even some North. Yep, I remember. Jane Fawn, the one straddling the cannon. Hanoi Jane. Still haven't forgiven her. But, they're protesting the war, is exactly what they're protesting. They, 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 you know, the people are way bringing way more into it than is need to. Oh, there's outside influences. Well, now we got YouTubers and, and influencers that are just doing that. But the, in, in interviews of all the kids, the kids are saying, no, we just organized it and we did it. And then people just showed up, just like when I was growing up in Missoula, when there was a, a demonstration on campus in Missoula, Montana, in 70-71, okay? The ROTC Center, the campus, the protest, Vietnam War, everything. Were they just college students from the university? No. I was there. I was a high school student from Sentinel. And a lot of people I knew in high school there. What? My mom's there. Mom's just a citizen of the, you know, Missoula. Wait, is it Don's mom? You, it was citizens. Okay, that's why the, the that's why the crowd swells because just more than college people get involved. But the press now say, "Well, you know, it's all blah, 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 blah. it's all politicized anymore." I'm telling you, if you listen to one side, it's just they you both call each other the same names for crying out loud. All we are saying is give peace a chance. Everybody now, everybody's talking about. I, it's so reminiscent. You know, I'm, I'm watching the news last week, and it's just like, I remember. I remember watching this on the news all the time. I remember being involved in it. I remember. And... 
There was no malfeasance. There was no hidden agendas. There was no big conspiracy. We wanted the stinking Vietnam War to stop, and we wanted equal rights for blacks and women. As simple as that. That's why we were assembling. That's why we were exercising our First Amendment right. Okay? What it is now is that if you don't like what the people are saying, then it's okay to, you know, bring the police state into it. You know, if they're saying, yeah, save the, you know, save this, save that, do this, that. Everybody's on board. But if they're like, no more war, they're not so much on board. So I think bringing the National Guard, bringing in the military to deal with college students, what could go wrong? Rewind the podcast. Listen, I just told you. Andy, we're done. Andy says, we're about done here. So, remember, have a great week. Spay and neuter. Help that pet population. Adopt, don't shop. Foster, rescue, Adopt the shelter pet today. Till next week, have a great week. This show is for Cricket. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks.